So in the second half of this series, we're going to take a look at magnetic fields. And in order to understand how magnetic fields are different than electric fields, it helps to first look at the magnetic force itself. So this is a code that's directly out of Chavez and Sherwood's Matter and Interactions. Um, this looks at the behavior of a charged particle in a uniform magnetic field. So the particle we'll look at is the proton. We've got the mass of the proton here and the charge of the proton here. Um, our, excuse me, our magnetic field, I have to stop saying electric field, our magnetic field is pointing in the y direction. So this is uniform. This is the same at all locations in the simulation. And this code has a, a neat feature where it displays the magnetic field everywhere in the region. And so first we draw a little grid to kind of give us a view of the particle's motion. And then we have the magnetic field being shown uh, everywhere within that grid. So the magnetic field is working everywhere. Even if you don't see an arrow at a particular location, the arrows are just there for, uh, for visual purposes. And so here we create our proton. We're going to call it proton. Uh, we are using the sphere function in vPython. And it's going to start out in about the middle of the, of the region. Actually, it's going to start in exactly the middle of the region. The region we're looking at is in the xz plane. So that's why we've got x and z uh, both zero here. And then we'll start out a little bit above the grid. So you're going to see the, the particle floating above the grid. Since it's positively charged, I like to think of positive charges as colored red because that's uh, the color they had in my high school chemistry textbook. And we're going to leave on the make trail for this proton so that we can see its trajectory. Um, let's see, we set the charge of the particle. Our dt is very small since we're dealing in very small scales with a decently large force. Uh, we, need a, we need a small time step here. Now, this is where we calculate the magnetic force. Now, the, the magnetic force is given by a cross product. So I haven't done a video on the electric force because it's kind of straightforward. The, the electric force either points parallel to or opposite of the electric field, uh, just depending on whether you have a positive or a negative charge. But here, the magnetic force is given by a... Uh, it's given by a cross product. So the cross product is a way of multiplying two vectors in such a way that you get out a third vector that is perpendicular to the input vector. So we take the, the proton's velocity and we cross that with the magnetic field. So this is where you use the right hand rule. Uh, we'll review that when we have a, a visual on screen because that's a little bit helpful. And then we multiply by the charge of the particle. So since we're dealing with a proton, that means that the V cross B gives you the direction of the force. If you're working with a negatively charged particle, then the direction of the force flips to be the opposite direction. So all three of these, the force, the velocity, and B0, are going to kind of form uh, three perpendicular axes to each other, which is pretty cool. Uh, and then here we have our usual Euler-Cromer update for the velocity and update for the position. And let's hit Control 2 to see our animation here. So here's our magnetic field vectors in blue. So it's the same everywhere. It's nice and uniform. There's the grid for visualization. And here's our proton. And so when we think about this with the right-hand rule, so think about the proton at this instant, its velocity is pointing that away, kind of into the screen. So you take QV, there's your vector for velocity. You, so you point your fingers of your right hand along that direction. Then you curl the fingers of your right hand upward for the direction of B. So you do QV cross B, and then your thumb points in the direction of the force. So if you do that, if you take your, the fingers on your right hand, point them this way, and then curl them upward in the direction of B, your thumb points inward. And so that inward direction for the force determines the direction of rotation for the proton. Uh, it, it, the advanced term for that is the helicity of the rotation, but basically it determines whether it goes clockwise or counterclockwise. So in this case, our thumb would point inward this way, it would point to the right at this point, or it would point down at this point, or it would point left at this point, and that gives us a clockwise circle. And so this is a general property of positively charged particles, is that they will go in circles clockwise. If we flip the charge of this thing, so let's suppose we work instead with an antiproton. So let's make this negative QE. 
run with control two. So this thing has all the same properties as before, but we have changed the charge. Now we get the thing rotating counterclockwise because now you've got velocity pointing this way. You've got a magnetic field pointing up. So you do the right hand rule, cross from this way, go your fingers to the upward direction. Then your thumb points to the right still but we're multiplying by a negative charge now, so your thumb flips around, so we get a counterclockwise motion here. And in fact, we could compare this by, uh, let's put our proton back. Let's make now an antiproton. Let's call this an antiproton. Give this the color green. And so now I have to copy this. Actually, let's copy the whole thing. There we go, copy, paste, little delete there. And so now I can just change this to negative because this thing has the negative uh, uh, charge of the original particle. Actually, I should call this thing proton, shouldn't I? Let's change that to a proton. Let's change this to proton. Let's change, yeah, yeah, that's good. And so then I can change this to proton. There we go, just so we're keeping track of these a little bit better. Q proton. And so now I can just change all the protons here to antiproton. So the antiproton is uh, has the same mass and spin and everything else of a proton. It just has an opposite charge. I mean, there's more opposite. It's made of the antiparticles the, 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 of the quarks, but still, uh, it, 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 basically, it's a negatively charged proton. And so here you can see them both going along here. Oh dear, what have I done there? Um, I did something wrong. Oh, right, right. I need to change this to anti-proton velocity. Oops. I, yeah, yeah. We cannot up, we cannot have this thing's force depending on this thing's uh, velocity. Although that was a pretty cool animation. So here you go. Here's our proton and our anti-proton. And so they're going to make identical circles. The only difference is the helicity or the direction of rotation. So positive charges are going to rotate clockwise. Negative charges are going to rotate counterclockwise. And that's actually a good way to determine... Uh, whether a particle is positively charged or negatively charged is put it in a magnetic field and see what direction it moves. And then there's other stuff here we can change. So for example, we can uh, change the initial velocity of these folks. So I can make this one go, let's say 50% faster. Let's see what impact that has. So the red is now traveling faster than the green. And you notice that it makes a broader circle. So when you look at the, when you do the math and get the radius of this thing, the radius of the circle is proportional to the velocity. Basically, you get out that the faster you are, you have to turn in a broader circle. Kind of like when you're, when you're driving a car. It's kind of the same uh, essential principle there. Um, I can also, let's put that back to a two. Um, I can also change the strength of the field. So let's increase the field by 50%. And notice when I increase the strength of the field, I'm increasing the strength of the force and a greater force means a tighter turn. So these circles are now a bit tighter. Oh, and actually the, the B field grew a little bit. We have a taller B field now. So they're uh, in amongst the magnetic trees here in this forest, which is pretty cool. Um, I do wanna go Actually, let me do one other thing. Let's go back to the uh, to the speed. I wanna take a look at something cool that I forgot to point out. Let's take a look at how much time it takes for them to complete their circle. So let's take a look when they get to half a, rate, uh, half a revolution. They reach half a revolution at the same time. And here we get, they meet back up. So they've completed one revolution in the same amount of time. So even though the radius has increased, the velocity is greater at, at a, at, by the same factor. And so this frequency of rotation actually doesn't depend on the thing's velocity. It only depends on the charge and on the uh, field, which is pretty cool. Um, speaking of charge, let's do one other thing. Let's put their velocities the same. Let's give this antiproton twice the charge of the proton. So now it's, uh, it's an anti-helium nucleus, basically. And you notice here we get a tighter circle because basically the, the, the Q and the B both get multiplied in the four. So we get a tighter circle. But you also notice this one's now going faster. In fact, it's going twice, excuse me, it's, it's got uh, half the period. You have to be careful when you say faster in physics because there's faster meaning velocity and faster meaning a shorter amount of time. Um, so this thing is actually going with twice the frequency or half the, or half the period 
of the red one. So that's pretty cool. You get to play around with uh, with all those different factors. Uh, you could also change up this magnetic field and make it vary with space. So you could have that be a position, or excuse me, a function of the of uh, the location. That's kind of a fun thing to try out. Um, next time we'll take a look at how these magnetic fields actually come to be and we'll start taking a look at how currents produce magnetic fields. So thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Bye-bye.